Hi, I'm Ben Hanewalt, and today we're going to be talking about some frequently asked questions that I've received regarding the Power Focus 6000. So today I want to cover batch sequences as well as source batches. So to understand how a source batch works, we first need to understand how a batch sequence works. So if we follow along in the software, along the top of the screen you can see the batch sequence menu. So if I click into batch sequence, you're going to see a library of all the batch sequences I have on this controller. Now, if I click into one of these, you can notice that I have some settings, um, locking the tool on batch sequence complete, free order. Um, these settings I don't want to focus on a whole lot. What I want to focus on is the batch configuration. Now if I go into edit, you'll see that all a batch sequence is, is a group of P sets running to a certain batch size. So, a batch sequence, or this batch sequence, is going to be running P set number four three separate times, as you can see on the right side. And then after that, after it completes P set four, it's going to run P set number one five separate times. So that's just a general overview of what a batch sequence actually is. So it's basically just a group of P sets running to a batch count. Now, what we're going to go over now is going to be source batch. Now if we go back out to the home screen and we go up to the top right corner, you're going to see the sources menu. So we'll click on sources. We have a whole separate video regarding source tightening and what they do and essentially a source tightening is just selecting a parameter set through an external source, whether it be open protocol or a field bus. So a batch sequence is similar. So if we click down to batch sequence, and I click on the batch sequence that's already created, you can see we have a couple of options in here. We have a name, abort on new identifier, identifier method, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then free order. So let's talk about the identifier method. So if I go in and I click and change over to number, what you're going to notice is I lost all of my other settings. Essentially what this type of source batch would be would be if we want to use an external source to select whether it be a uh, open protocol connection or a field bus connection. If I click information, you can tell that if we receive a value of one, we're going to activate batch sequence number one. And if we receive a value of two, we're going to activate batch sequence two. And so on and so forth. So if we go back and I change this identifier method over to strings. Strings is going to be used with a scanner. So that would be an external scanner plugged into the Power Focus 6000. And you can see I have the option for free order showed up. And if I turn this on, it's going to allow me to scan my identifiers in either order. Now, I'm going to leave this set to off for this example, and we can take a look at our identifier string configurations. Now, we have two scans programmed in here. We have water and we have coffee. So let's take a look inside each of these. And keep in mind, you can have up to four scans per source batch. So if I click on water, you'll see a couple of options. I can name it, I can set the length of the identifier, and I can also set the significant position. So what this is, is this is essentially if we scan with a length of eight, the first position of that scan is going to be the one that is going to be selecting our batch sequence. So keep that in mind. And then save positions is essentially how many of these characters do we want to save to the identifier that's attached to the OK or not OK rundown. So if I click out of the water and I go into the coffee, you can see it's slightly different. The length is 10, so it's a little bit longer. And there's no significant positions, it's completely blank. And what this means is, is that the water scan is going to be selecting the batch sequence alone. Now if I was to add a significant position in here, let's just say I add it as one. So that means that the first position of that scan is going to also be a significant position. So if I close out, the last place we're going to go is going to be the edit button. So when we click edit, you're going to see the string contains a 1, a 2, or a 3, and we're going to activate batch sequence 1, 2, or 3. Now, we just changed the significant positions. So now, 
The first scan is going to have one significant position and the second scan is going to have another significant position. So in this situation I would have to add a character to each of the string contained. So I could say 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3. So now the first position of both of the scans would need to be a 1, a 2, or a 3. So when we back out of here, that is all the settings that we're going to have with regards to a source batch. Now that is going to be for selecting from an external scanner or from an external source like Open Protocol or Fieldbus. And at this point we can go back out to our home screen, we can go to our virtual station menu, and we can make sure that the task is set to our source batch that we just created. In which case, this one, we already have our scanner selected as the task. So at this point, our virtual station running the cabled tool is going to be looking for two scans, one for water, one for coffee, and a significant position of one, two, or three in the first character of each of those scans. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand how we can use source batches as well as what a batch sequence is on the PowerFocus 6000. If you do have any further questions, please feel free to contact an Atlas Copco representative so that we can help you out getting you some answers.